two days ago, I noticed something was wrong with my pectinia. And now, here we are, fighting off devastation once again in Amathia's garden. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. I'm disappointed to say that even though things looked great in this tank only a week ago, three days after I posted my last video, I started to see problems. And one of the problems was my pectinia. I did a whole bunch of reading and I saw what looked like it might be chitons or something on the coral so I decided to dip it. I use Revive because it's a disinfectant that's not quite as harsh as iodine. Well, that's according to what it says on the bottle. I have here a gallon of new salt water and it says to mix four caps of the Revive into a gallon of aged seawater. And so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to very carefully get the pectinia out of the tank and put it in the dip. After that, I'm going to show you the issues that I'm having in my tank. So stick around for that. I'm quite mystified as to what has happened this time. Although I do have one small suspicion that I will mention later on. So there it is. And it is really looking rough. The dark patches are around the eyes and they're kind of spreading. It's shedding this mucus, so something is really bothering it. So here's the plan. I'm going to grasp this little piece of rock right there with the tweezers and try and pull this up so that I can get my other hand under it. So, wish me luck. Okay, here we go. have a container for it but I have it safely in my hand now it's going into the container so here we are in the container and now we're gonna go put it in the dip here is the pectinia I'm gonna grab it very very carefully the tissue is so delicate and I'm just terrified I'm going to lose this thing. Well, terrified is the wrong word. I'd be very, very sad to lose this. I've had it for three years. Growing it from a tiny frag. Okay. And now it's going in the dip. Okay. So, this guy's been in here for probably 10 minutes. And I have not seen a lot of stuff come off. Uh, a couple pods, things like that. A lot of slime. So I do not know what is going on in my tank right now, but this isn't the only coral showing signs of stress. So in this other container, I have new salt water. Yeah, you heard that crunch. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to find a place to hold it that it hasn't encrusted on the rock. And right now I'm swishing it back and forth to help it get rid of all that slime that it had. I have no idea if it'll create more, but I'm just doing my best here. I have no doubt there will be some damage on it from handling. All I can do is just try and be super, super careful. I mean, you can see the delicate, delicate structures that are covered by the skin. All right, so now it's going into the water, salt water. And I'm gonna let it rest for a few minutes 
and then I'll swish it around again to rinse it really well and then I'll put it back into the tank. So I don't know what to say. I'll show you the rest of the tank while I'm waiting for this to sit. I have no clue what's going on in there but something's happening and that's why I'm not doing a point and shoot update on Mollywood this week because I'm in a situation where I have to spend the time to try and save this guy. All right, to the tank. Okay, so what is happening in the tank? Well, you remember last Tuesday, not even a week ago, well, I, actually I should back up a little bit. Starting on Friday, I started seeing things like this. That's supposed to be green. Do you see any green or red? It was green and it's gone gray. The starburst is not extending polyps at all. There's a big white patch here that seems to be spreading. I've looked for nudibranchs. I am not seeing any. Don't know what that's about, but I'm going to keep watching it. The torches actually look better today than they have. I should say the T5s are on right now, hence the colors are not very good. My hammer is looking better now actually than it has for the past few days, but it was closed up tight. The Duncan is coming back out again, but it was also closed up tight. My Cinerina was tiny wasn't spread out. It's looking better today than it has for several days. My pagoda coral closed right up and produced a mucus sheet. The octospawns, they both also, oh, there's the royal grandma. Oh, you know, the royal grandma for, for quite a while now has been behaving just like this. And I'm talking like a month. He moves from his little cave right there to under here and just sits on his side. He's breathing, he's not lost any fins. Yeah, he's breathing really heavy. I think he's, I think he's about done. I may have to pull him out of here. The octospawns, they look more open today than they did yesterday. The bubble coral is starting to come out now where it was pretty closed up. But check this out. Remember me talking about how wonderful it was to see colors coming back to these two? Yeah, not so much. Now they're brown along with this one that was brilliant lime green or bright green, brown again. My Pocillopora, which I could always rely on for beautiful polyp extension and bright green. No, not so much. And I'm horrified to see this, yeah. I believe it's Bryopsis. There's another spot around the side that I can't show you on camera because of the angle, but I'm almost afraid to treat the tank with fluconazole because things are stressed right now. I may have to do it anyway. My Stellata, check it out. It looked nice six days ago. Starting Friday, it started to decline and this is what it looks like today. Remember my bright green encrusting slash plating, Monty? Look at it. Again, something is going on in here. Uh, the Millipora, color's not great, but it doesn't seem to be bleaching. This is it. There doesn't seem to be bleaching going on. This one, the color's really dulled down. It was green. So what is happening? Well, I have a suspicion that when I pulled out the algae scrubber from the sump, I disturbed a lot of nasty that was trapped in the matrix, the pond matrix that's down there, and that got into the tank in spite of the fact that I shut off the flow before removing the algae scrubber. I thought I learned that lesson. I believe some of the stuff that was trapped inside the uh, pond matrix got released and got into the tank. That is the only thing I can think of that could possibly have caused this reaction. This is similar to what happened back in September after I did the full sump reboot. I'll put a link in the description to that video if you're interested in seeing it, if you haven't already. So not much got out of there, 
but probably just enough, I'm thinking, to cause these problems. I'm pretty devastated right now, to tell you the truth. Today was the first day in probably five years that I actually allowed myself to contemplate just giving up, just selling whatever I could that was still healthy and just walking away from it, keeping Mollywood, but giving up this huge responsibility. But I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see what I can do because <laughs> unfortunately my personality, I don't give up easy. One thing I noticed is how clean the sand was under the pectinia. That's a good thing. Another thing I noticed is that some corals didn't look too bad. So not everything was affected negatively. Okay, let's get this guy back in there. I'm very nervous about this because it is so fragile. So I'm picking it up out of the container the same way I did before by grasping that small outcropping of rock. With my tweezers, I can get it. Okay, this is going to be really tricky, so bear with me. And let's see what happens. After looking at the pectinia post dip, I have to say, I don't really think the dip was a good idea, but I can't do anything about that now, and I just have to hope that it recovers. This guy's still looking very, very rough. There does still seem to be mucus being shed, and a lot of dark on here. I don't know, it's been through worse, but I'm pretty worried about it. And you know, the tank is just, I don't know, I don't know what to think. At the, oh, wait a minute, the pagoda coral's coming out. Well, that's gotta be a good sign, right? Um, looking at the hammer, hammer coral's coming out. So, I don't know if the recovery is gonna be fast enough to save this, for example. I would be thrilled to see even a slight tinge of green on there. Now that I'm over my little pity party, I do have a plan. I spent the afternoon testing parameters. Everything is in line. Magnesium, 1470. Calcium, 455. Alkalinity, 7.5 nitrates somewhere between 5 and 10. Phosphate is actually slightly down 0.147. Salinity is rock solid at 1.025. Temperature is 77.9. My plan here is to do daily water changes of 10 to 11 gallons. I'll follow that with a check of parameters to make sure nothing is being negatively affected by that. And I'm also going to put some carbon in the sump in addition to what I already have in my filter media cups. I can only hope that whatever is in here that's toxic gets diluted by the water changes. And by the way, the fish are all fine other than the royal grandma. So whatever is the problem is not affecting them. And hopefully the pectinia will turn around. All I can do is watch and wait. And something else I'm trying, uh, this pump normally hangs right beside the skimmer with the pump section in the water. I'm removing it on the off chance there is something going on in this pump with corrosion or something leaching into the water. So you can see I've just got it sitting in that container because I have to unplug the cord if I do anything else. So it's going to stay there and see what happens next. I came really close to just giving up on this tank today, but I'm not quite ready to walk away from it. Thanks for watching.